to take this flight. So let's have a brief word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that, Lord, as we look into your word, we ask that, Lord, you will enlighten us, you will cause us to see the things that are freely given to us. And I ask for the spirit of understanding and the ability to communicate your word with such ease that it is of benefit to both the speaker and the hearer in Jesus' name. Let your word comfort like fresh bread from the homes of heaven and let your people be truly fed with the very words that come from your heart in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Okay, you're welcome to the third class. And today we want to consider a very important aspect in the prophetic, and I've titled this, How to Deal with the Spirit of Error and Familiar Spirits. How to Deal with the Spirit of Error <clears throat> and Familiar Spirits. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So um, <clears throat> in the prophetic, there are some enemies you will need to deal with. There are some enemies you need to understand so that you can appropriately put them where they belong. If uh, not to understand this, is to put yourself in a very difficult position where you might find yourself um, <clears throat> having, um, you may find, you know, certain things get crashing into your ability to minister or to be a blessing to people. And this is so important and very basic, but when you don't know it, you can suffer <clears throat> unnecessary stress. So we're talking about the spirit of error and the spirit of family. So under this section, we are going to look at uh, topics like the spirit of error, overcoming spirit of error, and so on and so forth, testing the spirit of error, and unmasking familiar spirits. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, again, I need to say to you that this, se this session is being recorded. So <clears throat> after now, the recordings will be made available and eventually they will be uploaded online on, the, on my YouTube page. And uh, those of us that are part of Prophetic School, we also get a benefit to have these recordings uh, at your disposal. So uh, but please take your pen and your diary or your writing pad and begin to write. Now, I want to look very briefly at <clears throat> what really brings about the subject of the spirit of error or the spirit or familiar spirits. But before I do anything, I want to read the scripture in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 6. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 6. We are of God. He that knoweth God, and you look at that word know, uh, that <coughs> is very profound, but I will not stress it. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God does not hear us. Hereby we, nearby know we the spirit of truth, and the spirit of error. Every time God speaks, the Bible tells us that the spirit of prophecy is the, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So <clears throat> everywhere you find truth being communicated, one of the greatest enemy of truth is error. So error, not necess error is not necessarily something that is wrong. It is many times a mixture of truth and, and um, right, of right and wrong, or truth and error. So you'll find that in some of these um, other religions we have all around the world. We have several religions all around the world. Everybody is talking about peace. Everybody is talking about love. Okay? So if you even go online, you see some of these uh, uh, Buddhist monks on Facebook, you know, you see short videos, you see them talking about the issue of love, world peace. <clears throat> some of them even go ahead and saying, how can you prove there's a heaven? Anything you cannot see within your current reality cannot be proven and therefore cannot be an emphatic statement. So you have several people who are coming out with several, you know, uh, all kinds of, you know, knowledge, body of knowledge. And this is I start, people do their PhD on these things. Okay. So, but how do we determine that which is consistent with the word of God? And I believe everybody I'm speaking to now is actually saved and believes in Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. If not, uh, that is where we really need to start from. So, uh, <clears throat> Apostle John is telling us, that one of the ways you are able to determine the spirit of truth from error is the capacity of that person or the spirit controlling that person to identify and believe and proclaim the truth. Again, I want to read another scripture in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 17. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 17. He says, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked, 
fall from your own steadfastness. That means that as you begin to grow in the prophetic, it is possible for you to start well and then be led astray <clears throat> by a seducing spirit and you begin to partner with evil spirits. I remember the story of a particular brother um, who had gone to the mountain to pray here in Nigeria, in the Southwest. He wanted, you know, he was going the prophetic and he really wanted to get more anointing and decided to go on the mountain to pray, or a particular mountain that was popular in that area. And then when he got to the uh, top of the mountain, he saw a particular young man and the man said, oh, are you here to pray? Yes, he said, are you? Then the man asked him, do you want spiritual power? And the brother said, that's why I'm here. Do you want to be powerful in the prophetic? He said, yes, do you want to be able to tell people's names, tell their numbers, tell them what they heard, tell them sorts of their prayers? He said, yes. He said, do you, he said, if you go to my, to this side, you know, of the mountain, you are going to uh, see a prophet there who is ministering to people. He can help you. He will empower you. And those are his words. He will empower you. You'll be able to see names, phone numbers. You'll be able to tell what people have eaten, uh, go back into their history and tell them where the problem is coming from. He said, this one will work immediately. He said, but on the other side of the mountain, there's another prophet there. He doesn't have too many customers, okay? But it's all, you keep praying, 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 you will not see anything. So you now, you know, the brother now <laughs> began to think that, okay, if there's a prophet now that can give me what I want now, you know, he wants to give you the blessing, he wants to give you the miracle, he wants to give you... Um, <clears throat> the anointing you are looking for without a price. He wants to give you everything you need without any level of uh, concentration that is required. And then this other one will tell me to fast and pray and wait on the Lord for spiritual empowerment. So that means there's a difference between the two. So the young man now says, so which one do you? He said, I, I would rather go to the other man that will take me so many years before I get it. And that was how that conversation ended. So the spirit of error is everywhere. The, the spirit of error, is, it doesn't really, you know, the goal is to deceive you. The goal is to take you out of the will of God. But it doesn't really come uh, looking that way. You know, it doesn't present itself as error. Most of the things we know today in, the, in, in our environment, on social media, uh, information out there in the books, they are wrong, but they are presented as truth. So there's a spirit that sits around these to ensure that people do not have the accurate information. And as a result of this particular agent of Satan, many people no longer believe in the prophetic. Many people associate being a prophet with uh, being careless, not being disciplined, not living by God's word or by God's standards. So they see prophets, uh, as some people do. If you go to some churches and you see the way they talk about prophets, if you are a prophet, you will not even, you will just say you're a brother. You probably not want them to know you're a prophet. Because some people just have this thing for prophets. They don't want to hear it. And many times it is because of the activities of this spirit of error and familiar spirits in the atmosphere. It is amazing how believers many times are comfortable with being normal. People see not hearing God. A, a believer, a born again Christian, sees not hearing God as normal, you know. And it's amazing. It, it's a is the operation of the spirit of error. <clears throat> a believer should not, be con should not be convenient not knowing the voice of the Lord. Are you with me? A believer should not be convenient not knowing the voice of the Lord. Many times when we see people who operate in this um, particular, um, <clears throat> in this particular revelation gifts, or maybe they are operating the gift of prophecy or tongues and interpretation, we are amazed like, wow, wow, we want to be like this. But actually these things have been given to us. Sincerely, this, the difference between you and that person you admire so much is the attention you have given to the gift. The difference between you and the next person you admire is the attention you have given to knowledge, is the attention you have, you have given to spending time on God. There are people that are gifted prophetically, and if the devil sees they cannot stop them, it makes them focus on fighting the wrong battles. So you may be having all kinds of spiritual battles and you are trying to kill, put out small fires. And it's, what you need to do is to build your spiritual capacity to such a level that some of those battles will just, they'll just fizzle out. <clears throat> so this, this is what we are saying. Now you also have to understand that the Holy Spirit is the one that gives us the ability to prophesy. It's the Holy Spirit that gives us the ability to be able to you know, see visions, uh, dream, uh, give us background information on certain things or operate in the gift of the senior spirit or gives us the interpretation to tongues. 
So your focus actually should be the person and the, uh, of the Holy Spirit, not just on the gift, but on the person. If you put the cat the other way around, you are go, go, you, God may find you in a position where uh, it cannot really trust you. Okay? If somebody keeps coming to your house and every time the person comes, it's because the person needs something. Okay? <clears throat> or if I came to your house for the first time and the first day I came, you gave me a plate of pounded jam and I finished everything or you gave me you know, some rice and I finished everything and there was no grain. There was no grain left uh, <clears throat> in the plate on the plate. Then I came the other day and then you gave me wine. And then a uh, man of God, this is a bottle of wine for you. And I drank the wine and I said to the glory of God and nothing was left. And I'm like, wow, this man really drinks. He doesn't take alcohol, but he drinks. Amen. So uh, then some other day I came and said, ah, uh, brother Mackinde, please, uh, could you uh, give me some money? I need money to sort out a few things. And you gave me a hundred thousand. At, at some point, you just realize that, okay, I love this man, I love my pastor, I love, <laughs> I love this friend of mine, but every time he's in my space, I, always, I end up losing something. So I'm not stealing directly, I'm stealing indirectly, so I keep losing something. So at the end of the day, you will find that you just, somehow you start avoiding me. And that's the way it is with God many times. Many of us are only, when they check the list of our record with God, most of the things we talk about are only things that really revolves around us. And who do we know um, in, among humans, among our species, human beings, who behave like that? They are babies. It is only babies that will, your baby will come to your room, mommy, I want biscuit, early in the morning. <laughs> your baby needs water in the night. She doesn't care if people are sleeping, she cries. You wake up and you get up and you give her some water. So even in the middle of the, <laughs> after eating dinner, some of the children come and say, oh, they still want to snack on something. And sometimes if, if you are not really strong and you have to say no, they will make you feel like a bad person. So uh, the, you, you, you need to get the perspective you know, right. The emphasis here should be on your relationship, first of all, with the Holy Spirit. It is when you have established that level of trust over time that God can begin to trust you with the lives uh, of others. You cannot operate, again, that's just what I'll say, you cannot operate accurately in the gift of prophecy or in any of the prophetic operations without an intimate uh, relationship with the Holy Spirit, uh, because it is the Holy Spirit that helps us develop character uh, and helps us to function in the gift. We must also be open to the to discerning the foul spirit of error. It's a very terrible spirit. It comes in and it looks like um, <clears throat> it looks like um, like the real. I remember many years ago uh, we had a a particular prophet. I never met him before, but he had my dad knew him and he came to us to pray for us. And my dad was having, you know, some kind of challenges way back then with his health. And he came and, and please, I want you to hear this story. He, he came and then he said, oh, this is what God said. This is what God said. I was already a born again Christian. Uh, he, he said a few things and said, oh, there was going to be deliverance, blah, blah, blah. And then he said he wanted to do some things in the house. So he brought out, they gave him, so he requested for salt. And then he went around the house poured salt in certain specific um, areas. And then he went to the car where my dad's car was parked. He put salt, you know, it took years later for me to realize that <laughs> it took, listen, listen to me. If you, <clears throat> if you relate to people who operate in the occultic, and I'm talking about Satan worship, not all these witches from your village. Oh. I'm talking about real, real, real people now. <laughs> real, real, real witches, you know, Satanists, okay? Salt, salt is one of the elements they use to amplify uh, uh, a demo demonic atmosphere in any place. So if you go, if you see a prophet tell you that, look, um, go and bring salt, and they, they can use it to create a perimeter around you, and they lock you in. So, but you don't know these things because you know you just read the Bible. But I'm, I'm telling you that out there, salt is one of the commodities they use in the in the dark world to uh, for for their wicked uh, so, so uh, if you don't know okay. okay please let's try to keep our mics mix okay so uh if you don't know some of these things you will not be able to identify them because some of the things that uh the spirit of error brings out may not be may not necessarily be something that is in the bible it may just be something peculiar to um 
um, to their to their craft. Now let me tell you another story. I was at Ikorodu last week, um, Friday. I'd gone there to tidy up a few things, and as I was uh, as I was coming back, I was at Ikorodu bus stop. I didn't drive, so I ended up take a bus. Then I saw these people in white, you know, not white garment churches. They they just dressed in white uh, from from they had this white head scarf. They didn't they didn't wear shoes and they were dressed in a Yoruba attire, but plain white. And then a young boy came to me in white and said, look, I need you to give me some money. And then I first led in my street and I said, what do you need money for? He just said, give me money. I said, I, I said, I'm going to tell you what you need now. You need to give your life to Jesus. As I mentioned Jesus, the guy walked away. Then an, an elderly woman came to me, you know, and said, give me money. Uh, we are having a celebration. And I said, sorry, which church do you belong to? She said, no, we are not... Um, we are not Christian, so we are, to use the Yoruba language, um, that means like, um, uh, I don't want to mess up your, if you are not Yoruba, but something like uh, et worshippers or something, or somebody interpreted to me and said, uh, like white witches, Aha, that we are white witches. So when she said that, when the person, I said, oh, white witches. And I said, mama, please come. I said, I am a, believer in Jesus Christ. She now said, eh, eh, plus, I wish I could say this strictly in Yoruba, you would have loved it, but because of our diverse <laughs> population. So I, she said to me in Yoruba that, ah, eh, whether it's a Christian or Muslim, we, we are all the same thing. I said, aha, this is where the state of error begins to come in. Every time you watch a film on African magic on YouTube, and you see a pastor first praying for somebody, then an imam comes to, uh, comes to <laughs> put in some effort, and then later it is the abalist that finally gets the job done. You know that they are selling a message to you subliminally. They're trying to speak to you. You could be in the office, you could be in the office and you could be hearing that, okay, we are all serving the same God. Uh, let a Christian pray for us and let a Muslim round up, okay? Those are things we do to keep the peace. But I hope you know that the moment you start believing that thing, you have given yourself over to the spirit of error. These things are everywhere in the atmosphere. They are in the atmosphere. So I, you have to be very careful. These things are in your offices. It's the spirit. Your, your, your boss may be a pastor, but he might have given himself uh, over to the spirit of error. With all these things like uh, if, you, if, you, if you walk in love, if you don't hate your, if you don't hate your neighbor, those people will tell you that they will keep telling that the most important rule in the Bible is love. But one of the other important rules in the Bible is truth. Not just love, truth. Not just love, truth. So it's not if people say use the love thing. Jesus said love your neighbor as yourself. That's the golden rule. In order to cloud your judgment so that you don't see what is going on underneath. If you believe that you are actually friends or uh, partner with a Muslim, can you speak against his prophet and his, the, the color of his eye of his eyes will not change, okay? You touch something deep in that person, you will see the reaction in their face. The moment I began to preach to that woman by the bus stop, waiting for my bus to be filled, she said, look, if you are not going to listen to me, uh, if you are not going to give me money, I don't want to hear about Jesus. And I said to her, I said, Mama, you, are, you look like you are somebody in your, you know, you are over 50 or close to 60, I don't know. I said, but you need to give your life to Jesus. You need to give your life to Jesus. And then she got angry and she walked away. Okay. So now this is a real life experience with the spirit of error. These things are everywhere. These things are everywhere. The spirit of error tells you that you cannot be permanently free. That everybody has one cross is carrying. That's the spirit of error. They try to misrepresent the scripture and play to the side of weakness. And I hope somebody is hearing me right now. Now, um, you look at that scripture again. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 17, the word of God says that we have to be careful so that we are not led away. He said, beware, lest ye are led away. That means that you require more caution to be able to detect the activity of the spirit of error more than zeal. If you are too zealous in, with, with wanting to use your gift, by the time you find yourself in a church, another church, or where they don't really, where your pastor is not there, or you find yourself in a group of among some Christians and everybody is prophesying, how do you really know that God is not amongst you there? Okay, so how do you really, how do you know when your colleague who you know 
um, has three girlfriends or your colleague who you know, uh, a lady who has like two sugar daddies in the office and she dresses in a very, high, in a very provocative way and she keeps telling you that every time she sleeps, she dreams and every time she dreams, the dreams always happen. And you know this person is not safe. And nothing tells you in your spirit that this person is operating by a very wrong spirit. How are you able to tell? If you, if you read in the Bible, you will never see my name, Olu Agbenga there. So there's no way to, to tell me that I have a spirit of error. You must have the ability to detect. And one of the ways to be able to detect a spirit of error is to be cautious. The Bible says, beware, beware. Don't just take everything simply because it looks like it, it sounds like it, it speaks like Christianese. You have to be very careful and subject that spirit to the word of God. Now, in the process of relating with some of these foul spirits, if you are not careful, your soul can be contaminated. Your soul can be contaminated by Satan, and that's why it's important. And I'm not just talking about you giving your life to Christ. I'm talking about on a consistent basis that Paul commands us to yield the members of our body to Christ. So you take your body and give it to Christ. You take your soul, your mind, your will, your, uh, your emotions, your imagination, your memory, and yield it to the Lord. Why am I saying this? Because when the Lord speaks to you many times, the information will flow from your spirit into your mind. And if your mind is contaminated, it can color, it can color the, the real meaning of the prophetic word that you, uh, that you have received. I want to talk about overcoming the spirit of error. To overcome the spirit of error, uh, let's give attention to the following points. Now, these are not the only points, but they are the ones I was able to uh, personally put down um, for the purpose of this class. Number one, the gift of prophecy. And when I say the gift of prophecy, I'm talking about the office of the prophet, the ministry of the prophet, uh, dreams, uh, revelation, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, tongues and interpretation. All these prophetic related gifts, they require strong levels of humility, strong levels of humility and meekness. Meekness. Let me, let me give you uh, my personal definition of meekness. Humility on this side is the ability to bring yourself under and not to pass off as being extremely maybe important or more than what you know. How many of you know some of us when we were in school, secondary school, primary school, some of the very quiet people in class that you think they are, <laughs> they are very dull and they, they rarely talk. They are the ones who are usually first in class. In the days when we used to assign first position, they were usually first in class. And you that always want to raise your hand <laughs> and ask questions, we are battling between 17th position and 19th, okay? So I'm talking about somebody now, the 19th. Just make sure you are not the worst and just make sure that you are not, you know. So we only have one problem. The day we take the report sheet home, you need to explain to your dad why you are 15th, 16th, or 17th. But it was not about first. We, do, we know those who are going to get the first, and they were the ones who really talked in class, okay? What am I trying to say? Humility there is, you just have the disposition towards life where you don't blow your own trumpet. But you see, meekness, on the other hand, has a different flavor. I like to call meekness corporate humility. Corporate humility. An example of meekness is when Moses was seriously grieved by the other leaders in Israel, and they spoke against him, and they wanted to even pull him out as leader, and then God, uh, Moses, uh, God, could, uh, God came down and wanted to punish the people, and Moses began to appeal to God on their behalf. God said to Moses, let me destroy these people and raise a new generation from your loins. And Moses said, no, no, I, I, it doesn't, I, I don't want that. If you do that, people will say, oh, it's because God could not uh, keep them safe. That's why he killed them. So meekness is having the ability to harm. Meekness is having the ability to cause havoc and yet restraining yourself from using the power the way you have been given. Okay, meekness is having the ability to uh, maybe as a principal uh, or a teacher, send the child out of school and yet not being able to say, okay, I give you another chance. Meekness is you having the ability to crush somebody's head by the use of authority and yet choosing to not to do so. So when you are operating in the gift of prophecy, you require strong levels of humility. Humility lets you know 
that you that we, that you can grow in grace but it also keeps you open to the to mistakes or errors humility tells you that look it is possible for you to grow in the power of the holy spirit in the grace of the holy spirit and become stronger and stronger but it also lets you know that it is possible for you to make mistakes once in a while and whenever you make mistakes you can easily take uh, personal correction Another key that is very important in overcoming the spirit of error is your personal life of consecration. Your personal life of consecration. Uh, let me please quickly state this here. When you pray, when you pray, you are you are consecrating yourself to God. When you worship God, when you study the Word of God, but please, can I just chip in this? You have to be very cautious about building your relationship with God around you. Your relationship with God should be built around him. So you need to review some of the prayers you've been praying and asking yourself, are these prayers actually selfish prayers? Are they really about me? Are they really about God? Is it about the will of God for my life? Am I getting to love Jesus more? Those things are more important to God because we've seen gifted people who didn't make it. The scripture told us, he said, Demas has forsaken me. Having loved this present world, okay? So anybody could have gone this far and then not be able to pull through at the end of the day. John the, John the Apostle spoke about uh, this other guy there that was, you know, he said, Dao Trephis, that sought to have preeminence among the people. So when you are a very gifted person and you need to sharpen your ability to be able to detect error, you need to look at your personal life of concentration. Number three, you need to embrace the role of spiritual fathers. There are certain things that uh, from where you are looking at it, you may not be able to tell the difference. But when you share it with a mentor or your pastor or a spiritual person, a spiritual father or somebody who is spiritually higher than you are, you need, you'll be able to uh, uh, put a cap on what is actually going on. Another way to be able to determine the spirit of error is to tone down the glory and attention you are getting as a minister. When you begin to minister to people and people begin to say, ah, you know that sister ABC is very... Of, you know, sound prophetically. Do you know that brother Y X Y Z is very sound prophetically? People begin to look at you with some kind of, you know, uh, look at you in a different way. So you need to be able to tone down the glory and don't let it get you. If not, it will cloud your judgment. I can assure you that it will cloud your judgment. Um, how do we test the spirit of error? Let's assume you're in a meeting and then you want to, you know, you see some funny things happening. Uh, how do you test it? Number one, you subject that spirit to the word of God. You subject the word that you receive or the spirit uh, in the atmosphere to the word of God. One of the things I like to do when I find myself in that place is to begin to pray and rebuke that spirit. When I rebuke that spirit, I look for the reaction around me. Sometimes when I'm in a public space and I'm like sitting with like five, six people, I don't know them. I want to see who, uh, I don't know who really, so I begin to pray in tongues under my breath. All of a sudden, one or two people just look at me. They can't tell what is wrong, but they just keep staring at me. I know that they are reacting to the prayers that I'm, that I'm saying at the moment, but you look at me, you really can't, the person sitting close to me may not even know I was, you know, I was actually saying something. So you subject that prophetic word or that spirit to the word of God. Number two, you have to test the character of the person uh, bringing the word. You have to test the character of the person bringing the word. You cannot be best friends with somebody who is um, not born again. You cannot be best friends with somebody who elevates experiences above the word of God and then not be open-minded to uh, some of these errors. There are people who spend their time wanting to visit the spirit realm. They ended up getting mad. They just ran mad completely. Because in these things, these gateways are controlled by the Holy Spirit, and you have to be very careful about the possibility of uh, being exposed to them. So you need to test the character of the person, what's his relationship with God like, if he's married, what's his relationship with his wife, is he a very toxic person? You need to look at that because many, it's easy for prophets to exhibit their toxicity. Uh, another point there is, does the spirit submit to the authority of Jesus Christ? Does the spirit submit to the authority of Jesus Christ? I believe that's clear enough. Now let's talk about familiar spirits. Familiar spirits, I have tons of scriptures on familiar spirits. Familiar spirits are those kind of spirits that live amongst us, 
they know your history. They know your family. They know your father. They know your grandfather. They know your great grandfather. They want not the, the, the information you don't have about your family. They have it. Okay, they have it. So they know your nation. They know everything. They can predict your potential decisions. So just because somebody is able to tell you one or two, three things does not automatically validate that message you are receiving as God's word. So you need to be able to determine by careful observation and study and by the spirit of God, if what you are dealing with is a familiar spirit. Now, the, what, what, what can I tell about familiar spirits? They are very wicked. They are stubborn. They are difficult to detect. They are difficult to detect. I remember <laughs> uh, some years ago, I went with, you know, I went with someone to a particular meeting and this person belonged to a religious organization where they operate by familiar spirit. And this person believes that she is a prophet. So then we got to this meeting and then the, the, the full gospel meeting. And then the minister, I don't know, I, don't, I was meeting for the first time. He was ministry and then this other person began to manifest. You know, it looked like it was God. But because I was saved, I knew it was in God. So after the meeting, I was talking to her, like, what happened to you? during that meeting. She said, oh, she felt the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I say it was in the power of the Holy Spirit. It was the devil she came with that was manifesting. You know, later she got delivered and she became a proper Christian. You can't be talking about the parents of the Holy Spirit if you are not even saved. What you need is forgiveness, not uh, falling under the anointing. Okay, so this, these demons are difficult to detect and they can hang around you for a long time. They can hang around for a long time. They are also strongly related to the dead. Please hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. Familiar spirits are strongly related to the dead. When King Saul wanted to speak to Samuel, he went to a witch. The witch summoned a familiar spirit. Okay? Those are the things that many people see. And if you go to some parts of Benue State and some parts of Nigeria, they have their, some of their witch doctors, they have the ability to summon the dead. And you will hear the voice of your dead father, your dead mother, literally, not vision. You will hear the thing, say, ah, this is how I want you to share my land. Give my bicycle to Teve. Give my, my shirt, that my shirt in the room. Give it to, to David. Then give my uh, wrapper. Give it to Anna. You see, you will hear, then you will say, okay, that farm, that farm that I had at uh, Otupo, give it to you, so so person, and so, so you know, you just, you, you find this, and you begin to worry, ah, this thing is real, low. but it's familiar spirit. They are strongly related to the dead, and they manifest as such people in the dream. Listen to me, listen to me. The Bible says, blessed is, uh, they say, the Lord rejoices in the bones of his servants. When God, I do not believe that God allows familiar spirits so much uh, guarantee since we all became, since Jesus came and died to be able to mess around with the identity of believers. Listen to me. But these uh, familiar spirits can manifest using the image of people in the dream. One of the ways you will know is that the, char the characteristics of that person in that dream may not be so consistent with the person's behavior in real life. Because the devil will be trying to sell a lie to you. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to, over, I don't want to overshare, but let me read Luke chapter 19, Leviticus chapter 19 and from verse 31. Leviticus 19 and verse 31. The word of God says, regard not them. Look at what we are saying here. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defied by them. So when you go to some of those prophets on the mountain that have no you know, workshop, they have no signboard, they are just prophets on the mountain and then they are giving you prophecy, what God says is that every time you subscribe to them, every time you subscribe to them, and listen to me, there are prophets who wear ties eh, and operate by familiar spirit. If a prophet tells you to sow a seed before he prays for you, he's operating by familiar spirit. If he prays for you, will you get your answer? Most likely, yes. But that prophet he might already, he might even be genuinely saved, but he's already tapping into another source, power source that is not of the Holy Spirit, and he needs to repent. Can God ask you to sow a seed? Yes. 
do you need to pay to get anything? No. Freely you have received, freely give. If the person wants to be a blessing to you, the, let the person make up his mind. But if you ask, if you are here and you are a prophet or you are the mission people prophetically and you ask people to give you money or give you certain favors before you can minister to them, then you are operating in, on very dangerous ground. Look at what he said. He said, neither seek after wizards to be defied by them. I am the Lord your God. What is God saying to us here? He's saying that if you can just by associating with familiar spirits, uh, sorry, with people who bear familiar spirits, you can become contaminated. Uh, whether they are in your room, they are your classmates, and all of that. If you if you subscribe to it, you can easily get uh, uh, contaminated. Look at another scripture in Isaiah chapter eight and verse nineteen. Uh, Isaiah chapter eight and verse nineteen. And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not the people seek unto their God? for the living unto the dead. Do you see what I said again about familiar spirits and the dead? The, the, that I just read uh, Isaiah 8, 19. Please read it again when we are done with this class. So there's a strong familiarity with the unseen realm of darkness and the realm of, of nature, or our own natural realm. These things are very, very... There are other scriptures here. Uh, they are showing them on the screen now. You can also look at them. Ult ultimately, unmask still on unmasking familiar spirits, ultimately, Familiar spirits seek to provide an alternative to God. This is why God is so angry at them. Familiar spirits always seek to provide an alternative to God. They provide solutions without rules and conditions. They provide solutions without rules and conditions. And that's why you find that God always said to the people of uh, Israel that every time they go into a new territory, they were to destroy all the idols so that their souls will not be snared. Okay? If you, if you want something from God, you have to confess, you have to pray, you have to fast, you have to do some things, you have to keep your confession of faith, you have to stand on the word. The Baba in the village just ask you, take this thing, lick it, say one or two words, sleep, bang, you are done. So the only thing is that the price you are paying for that to pay, for that thing that they are giving you, you really don't want to, you really don't want to know. You really don't want to know. So familiar spirits wants to give you an alternative to God. You don't really need God. You want to be praying and fasting. You want to die. Some people will even tell you, some, some prophets in Lagos, and you know, you see one of them sometimes, two of them, if you are really on the street, they, they are prayer, prayer warriors. They come to pray for you, and you, you, you'll be sleeping in the room. You, they will bring their team. They will pray for you, do deliverance for you, do everything overnight, and then in the morning, you will just wake up, cook ever for them, you, they, or cook rice and then give them money. They are prayer contractors. These are the people I'm talking about here, people who carry familiar spirits. They provide solutions without any rule and um, condition. It's just like buying a pirated software. Uh, having a familiar spirit is like buying a, uh, a pirated software. So, uh, uh, so you need to be very careful. In that Leviticus chapter 19, what the word of God is saying is that familiar spirits can predict events. They can predict events, but they are not born again. They are, they are, these are prophets who are prayed by familiar spirits. Please, as I'm um, speaking now, you can begin to send your questions. Send your questions on the chat group, and we will look at them uh, from the next five minutes. So when you, I, I, you need to be very careful. If you are asking for counsel on matters of your destiny from people who are not born again, or people who have other cost commitments, you know, uh, my wife once said something about uh, some of their partners who came in from India, and they, they had some of these uh, gods, like maybe small calories or something, in their pocket. So when my wife you know, you know, was like, I was this, she said, oh, it's our, it's our god, it's one of our gods. But they, carried the, they put the thing in their pocket, and they could, you know, these Indians were going up and down. So for you, it's just like pebble, but for them, it's one of the gods that they worship. They carry that consciousness in their suit. You see them well dressed up, but they have their idols in their pocket. Okay, so when you are asking advice, oh, I had a dream, I had this, I had that, and you're asking that kind of person to interpret, to share his thoughts with you on spirituality, then you are exposing your soul to very grave uh, danger. Okay, uh, so to be able to deal with this, uh, to be able to deal with, uh, um, this, uh, with, uh, um, with familiar spirits, you need to trust God, among other things, for the discerning of spirit, the gift of discerning of spirit. The gift of the discerning of spirit is the gift that helps you see into the spirit realm and see through that person to be able to identify 
the spirit that they are operating with. You need the gift of eternal spirit because many times uh, these uh, demons are very difficult to discern. Then also when dealing with fam uh, familiar spirits, you need to live a life of prayer. You need to live a life of prayer. Many of these spirits cannot thrive in the place of, if you are the kind of person that only prays uh, for five minutes or 10 minutes, you can't cut this one. They will be there with you permanently. Okay, you see that Jesus Christ was always praying in the night, praying in the night. It wasn't for fun. Jesus needed to keep his channel very pure. Are you with me now? So when your fervent prayers are also a must when dealing with familiar spirits. Familiar spirits don't respect weak people. Familiar spirits don't respect weak people. Oh, I believe in the blood of Jesus. I know God can do it. I know God's word is... <clears throat> There's a place for confessions. But when dealing with familiar spirits, it's not confession. It is fervent prayers. Now, you also need to understand that familiar spirits can sometimes be very religious in order to hide their true identity. They can be religious. They can go to church, you, you know, and just, you know, hang around. And they are very comfortable in churches where people don't really pray. You know, they don't really pray so much. They are happy. They even encourage you to go to church. Uh, you can also unmask familiar spirits by studying patterns in your family. If you notice that maybe in your family or oh, people don't get married until they are 35, then you notice this particular pattern, maybe from your great-grandparents up to you know, your younger ones, you are able to establish a pattern that this is a spirit that has lived with us for so long and has set a pattern, and then you are able to pray properly. Now, familiar spirits can also operate in the prophetic. They can dig out information about people or about you and they may try to manipulate you with it. When you are not sure, bind every spirit around you and discharge them by the power of God. Please hear what I said. Anytime you are not sure about what you are dealing with, begin to bind every spirit around you that is not of God and send them packing. Then reassess the situation again. Usually, familiar spirits, or people who carry familiar spirits, they agree with God's word, but they don't submit to it. Oh, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, we believe in prayers. Oh, glory to God. But they don't, sub, they don't submit to it. And anytime you see somebody that likes God's word, he, so he believes in it, but he doesn't live by it, that should put you on red alert. Hallelujah. So you need to apply the force of patience. Glory to God. That's the final point. You need to apply the force of patience. Many uh, manifestations of uh, familiar space, you cannot really see them just by looking at them. You need to apply the force of patience and be very observant. You are going to observe a lot of things. If you are always too uh, hasty to make up your mind, you will not see many things. Okay? So I'm going to stop here right now, and then I'm going to take questions. If we have questions, this is, uh, this is the time. So, uh, somebody, okay. They said I have uh, 15 more minutes. <laughs> Amen. I was thinking I could release everybody earlier today. Amen. Okay, so you need to apply the force of patience. I, I, you need to apply the force of patience. Now, as I'm talking now, some of you might remember one or two incidents where uh, you might have had a close shave with the spirit of error or the spirit of, uh, of familiar spirit. So I want you to look at those issues and let's look at them. Let's look at them. Because man, many of you have been praying. You went to people or people came to you, gave you prophecies, and it seemed that the prophecies were right, but you didn't get a solution. It's because you bought a pirated software. I'm telling you, you bought a pirated software. And that's why even though the information was right, it didn't have the power of deliverance. Even though the information was right, it didn't have the power of deliverance. You have to be very careful. A old king, King Saul, was deceived by familiar spirit. Uh, Prophet Isaiah warned us against familiar spirit. The scriptures are filled with them. There was this uh, prophet um, that uh, Philip led to Christ, but he was operating by a wrong spirit. How do you know when you are dealing with what? You can only identify familiar spirits when you are in the spirit. If you are living a carnal life, it may be quite difficult. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Okay. Uh, do we have any questions? Moderator, let me hand over to the moderator. Do we have any questions yet? We don't, we don't have any questions yet, but I, yes. I would like to ask a question of my own. Okay. Um, 